Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. You may hear something in the background. Annie has decided to chew on her elk horn. <laughs> but we're, today we're going to continue in the book of Matthew, and we're in chapter 18. But first I want to say, I hope all the mothers out there had a beautiful Mother's Day. And God bless each and every one of you who have brought forth the generation after generation to build this entire nation of people. So, with that said now, Matthew chapter 18, verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child, in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses or enticements to sin, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to the man by whom the offense comes. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, if they offend thee or causes you to sin, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, or causes you to sin, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. And that's Jehenna. Listen, I know there there's religions out there that don't believe in hell. But here... Jesus is talking about being cast into hell because of sin. So, brothers and sisters, just know, if you read the word of God, you will see that hell is real. It's a real place, and sinners will be sent there who are unforgiven. And how do you get forgiven? You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repent, repent you're sorry for your sins repent ask for forgiveness and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you'll gain your place in heaven but if you refuse him he will refuse he will refuse you excuse me I don't know why I'm like whoa, 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 whoa. like I've got um bunny hair in my lips or something <laughs> excuse me I apologize but um so just know hell is real and it will be a penalty box where you'll spend eternity if you are without Jesus. But he loves you so much. I can't imagine anyone rejecting him. Okay, verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven for the son of man is come to save that which was lost how think ye if a man have an hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray and if so be that he find it verily i say unto you he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. If you've backslidden, you're that lost sheep. And he's looking for you. 
and he's going to rejoice when he finds you and brings you back into the fold. This, this, these words that he spoke, they're so pertinent to everything that goes on in our lives. It's, it's not like they're just words and a story and, you know, that's all there is to it. No, go deeper. Go deeper. What What is he saying here? He's saying because he's the great shepherd. He's shepherding the sheep. He talks about that they're, they're not shepherding the sheep, that his sheep are lost. What did he say to Peter? Peter, do you love me? Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. He says, feed my sheep. The Lord asked him three times, and Peter's getting aggravated, and he's like, Lord, you know I love you. <laughs> says, feed my sheep. So, how do we feed the sheep? With the word of God. And it's important that we are in our Bibles reading the words of God and gaining understanding. Before you start reading, if you're a new Christian or even if you're an old Christian and you're just really getting around to getting into reading your Bible, pray to the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Before you start reading, the words on the page that you've been struggling to understand will all of a sudden begin to take on meaning that you can understand he's so amazing he will help you the holy spirit loves us so much it's the spirit of god in us you know when we've been saved um we have the holy spirit that comes and resides inside of us who is our great helper and our comforter he he jesus said would bring all things to re our remembrance in other words, there was a time that we knew these things. So let's continue. Verse 13. And if so, be that he find it. Verily I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine that went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father in he which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. It's his, it's his desire that none be lost. He doesn't want any of his children lost. You, you have to remember that, you know, he speaks of us as his children. And that's true. But he also refers to us as sheep. And he being the shepherd. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. In other words, what word? The words of God. What is incorrect that they're doing? How are they going astray? That's why we want to we want to bring them back into the path, back into the fold, that lost sheep. We want to bring them back. So first you go by yourself and say, "You know what? You, you did something and 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 it's not the right thing. We shouldn't be doing that." But here is what the scripture says. Not just your personal opinion yakking away at them where they become resentful. No. Do it in love and tell them, well, this is what the scripture says. And, and, and I'm worried about you. <laughs> and I'm trying to bring you back. And I don't want you slipping off the path. And so if they won't listen when you go just between the two of you, then go get two or three witnesses and take them with you. So they can back you up with the scripture to try to bring them back into the fold where they have, you know, slipped away. They're that lost sheep. Bring them back. Do all you can to bring them back. In love, with love. You think when the shepherd went out to find that one sheep, he's going, where is that doggone sheep? Wait till I get my hands on that little booger. No, <laughs> he's not. He's calling him. He's calling to him. He's calling to the sheep. He's looking everywhere. He's so intent on finding him because he knows he's in danger. 
He's not protected by the shepherd. He's gone off somewhere where he could be eaten alive by wolves. So, yeah, when your brothers or sisters offend you in, in something, they sin against you, or they've gone astray, they've, they've picked a path that's off of the narrow path, you know, go and try to bring them back. Do it in love. Do it in love. Otherwise, they will become immediately resistant and push you away. And what have you done? Have you done any good? No, you haven't done any good. Verse 17. Oh, I bit my lip. Oh, I bit my lip earlier. Mm. And I just bit it again. Oh, excuse me. Mm. Verse 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. And if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Forget about it. Stay away from him. You you did what the Bible instructed you, what the scripture instructed you to do. You did it. It's up to them. Remember, Jesus said, don't throw your, don't cast your pearls before the swine. If they're refused to hear you, just move on, you know the dust on your feet just move away verily I say unto you whatso, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and what is that? that's sin again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This is why we need to have companionship and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ because we can pray together. And that two or three together versus just one, we're so much more powerful when we have the ear of God. Because he's there with us when we're two or three gathered together in his name. He's there. He's there to help us. Excuse me, one second. Verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall, I, shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times. Now the seven times, he said, no, not seven times. You don't forgive him just seven times. Forgive them seventy times. Wherefore, therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants or who wanted to settle accounts with his servants and when he had begun to reckon or settle accounts one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents but for as much as he had not to pay he couldn't pay it he didn't have the, the money his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will, pay, I will pay thee. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him. He forgave him the debt. <laughs> and forgave him the debt. He loosed him from the obligation. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Not ten thousand talents, but a hundred pence. And he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou owest me. 
And his ser fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. I'll pay you everything. Just give me some time. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desireth me. He asked him, Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord, Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother their trespasses. What? Whoa. Verse 35 in chapter 18. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. What What's going to happen to him? Verse 34. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. He was forgiven. The Lord, his Lord, because he begged for forgiveness, he repented. Right? It's, it's, it's like similar to the being forgiven right here you owe this big debt because you have so much sin on you and you but you ask the lord to forgive you and he forgives you he forgives you of all your sin 10 a uh, uh, hundred talents wasn't it a hundred talents what was it Ten thousand talents that he owed that's a lot of sin right but because he asked for forgiveness, the Lord forgave him. But then he didn't forgive his brother who owed him. He wouldn't forgive him his trespass. So what did the Lord say? What did the Lord do? Mm. Verse 34. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Do you think our Lord would do that? It says, if we don't forgive those who trespassed against us, he's not going to forgive us. Big point here. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Our Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this earth as it is in your heaven. Forgive us our sins, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thou, thou art the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just remember. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Don't hold anything against anyone. Let it go. Give it to God. Turn it over to Him. Don't carry that around with you. It, it, even if you know what they've done to you is so heinous, so horrible, so wicked, so demented, so mean and hateful, forgive them. Otherwise, your sins won't be forgiven you by the Father. And what happens to those who don't forgive? This is the prime example. Delivered him to the tormentors till he paid every last cent that he owed. His sin was no longer forgiven him because he did not forgive his fellow man. 
That's a big lesson in here. It's huge. And so many of us are just, you know, like, whatever. You know, I don't care. I, no, get away from me. I don't. And you don't forgive them. Even though they're trying to say they're sorry. You know, trying to apologize. Saying they were wrong. You don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Get away from me. Oh, you're the bigger person, are you? Hmm. Tormentor. Tormentor till you pay the last cent. The debt is your sin. You won't be forgiven your sin. Okay? The hundred thousand ta talents, that's sin. That represents sin. Be forgiving. Be loving and be forgiving. And take care of one another. This time in this earth, we're like a vapor. We're here such a short time. Here, consider your life compared to a thousand years of our time being one day with our Lord. <laughs> Just think what eternity is going to be like with him. You know, he's not going to have mean, hateful, belligerent, hateful, horrible people with him he can't look on sin he's not going to have sinners unforgiven sinners in his presence it's not going to happen you may stand before his judgment seat and the white throne judgment but you'll never be inside those pearly gates you'll never see those streets of gold you'll never hear the angels sing and they're so beautiful. And you'll never be in, enveloped in that beautiful light. That's pure love. Oh, brothers and sisters. Repent. Be kind. Be loving. Love one another. Help one another. Do everything you can for one another. You know? Um, we're to be encouragement to each other. And to help one another. So that, you know, we're not winding, we don't wind up in hell with the tormentor. Okay? And as always, you know, I love you. He loves us so much. It's going to be so awesome. And just know, he's never going to give us more than we can handle. He's not. He's not going to give you an, uh, an obligation or it lets you come against a test that is bigger than you without giving you a way out. He loves us. Our father isn't up sitting up there going, hmm, let me see, how can I punish that one? I'll get that little one. <laughs> no, he's up there going, what can I do to make this one happy? Oh, let me see, how can I help this one? How, how can I, how, how can I, oh, let's see. Let me send Harold over to help Susan. Let me send John to help, uh, help Jose. He's up there working all the time for our benefit. He's a loving father. He's not a hateful, vengeful father. Don't you understand how much he loves us? You know, <laughs> you know, remember if you being a, a man are able to give your son food instead of a, a, a serpent when he asks for bread, you know, then how much more beautiful, good gifts can our, our Heavenly Father, who is so loving, give us? <laughs> Just know that when you go to sleep tonight, remember how much He loves you. And as always, I love you.